Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with uh, some very interesting news. So first off, from BSC News, which by the way, they have over 1 million followers over on Twitter or X. Um, and uh, they are pretty much shouting out Hedera. They're talking about how Hedera has smashed through 18 billion transactions and 35 million dollars in total value locked um i think that's definitely interesting to note the fact that hedera has been getting a lot more spotlighted attention um especially recently with the fed now news with uh, you know drop in my opinion as we really kind of look at what's happening around this space you know things are developing at a very rapid pace around utility i think now you know, we still have a few things that are getting hyped up. We still have meme tokens that are still kind of, you know, here and there. But for the most part, I think that people are realizing like where the real value is. I also think that people realize that we're on the cusp of a massive breakthrough on regulations around crypto. Um, and I think that they are preparing accordingly on what is, you know, possibly the next generation of technology around the space and what is going to be the next major leader around the space as well. Because again, like as we look at Hedera, there's a good chance that Hedera is, you know, going to be the next big thing around crypto, meaning, you know, this could very well be the third generation technology and it could flip Ethereum. It could possibly give Bitcoin a run for its money. And of course, like, you know, as we say that, is it going to happen? Is it going to, you know, 100 percent you know, be the case? No. Right. It's a possibility. And you got to remember that things take time. We're still a little bit away from a, a utility driven market, we still need proper regulations. We need regulations to come in and wipe out all of the trash. That way, a lot of these utility tokens, like for an example, HBAR, can decouple away from a Bitcoin driven market, which we still very well are in, and finally do their own thing. And I think that that is what everyone should look forward to is, you know, a utility driven market where these tokens are really driving themselves. They're not the passenger to a Bitcoin driven vehicle. So as we look at that, I also want to know account growth on Hedera because I think that account growth on Hedera is something to really kind of look at and uh, really kind of keep track of because recently we've seen from Arkea, um, account creation on Hedera shot up over the weekend with three consecutive days of 30,000 plus new accounts made each day. With all the exciting news around Hedera recently, it's clear that if you build it, they will come. And, you know, this is big. Also, I think like the daily active accounts have been growing rapidly as well. Um, like I said, there's a lot of spotlighted attention on Hedera. We know that recently they hit over 300,000 followers. They added another, you know, 4,000 followers to that number. Um, and then also, if you look at development side of things and user activity, you know, it's skyrocketing. And also, in terms of social growth, House of Chimera actually posted tracking growth, the unstoppable rise of Hedera. The HBAR ecosystem has experienced significant growth in social dominance. More crypto enthusiasts are discussing HBAR on X. A similar trend is observable with the network activity on HBAR, which is rising significantly. Again, HBAR, Hedera, it's becoming an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. And I, I've said it many times in the past as well. You know, a lot of these tokens and a lot of these networks in the space, they take time to build. But the thing is, is that price or even, you know, hype and all that, that comes later. First, you need to go through the slow growth. You need to go through the slow period of, you know, these networks really kind of expanding, use cases going live, NDAs expiring, and finally getting announced. Like, it takes a lot of patience. When you see people saying, hey, you know, you got extremely wealthy off of crypto, you were just lucky. Well, guess what? When you really kind of look at the resume behind crypto, it's not just a simple, hey, I got rich quick overnight. No, it's, you know, I went through hell. I went through complete hell for months and possibly even years before I made my wealth. This space is not for everyone. That's why I always say like, 
you know, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you even research these tokens? Like, aren't you here just for the money? No, absolutely not. Listen, you know, I love the investing side of things. Like, I, I love making money off of this market. You could do that, right? You could day trade all day long if you want to. But ultimately speaking, the goal here is to focus on what's really going to happen with crypto, right? Like, this is next generation technology outside of crypto, right? For the whole world to embrace. So, if we think about that, like, we are at a significant moment in time around crypto where the retail sector, for the first time in history, has the, 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 the foot through the door before the institutions and the big money actually flows into this space. And I've always talked about that. And talking about, um, you know, the big money, you know, I do think that we are starting to see a little bit more of a focus on digital banking, digital finance, things like that. Recently, we've talked a little bit about the, the digital future, this, you know, possibility of a cashless society. Like, there's a lot of talk about this and there's a lot of concern about this and i think that concern should be warranted i think that they are welcomed in um i've talked about cbcs and i've also talked about the world of finance as we know it today you know a lot of people are very very scared about what a cbdc could do they are scared about what could happen around our economy if we do see something like a cbdc uh rising but i want you guys to understand that you should also embrace private public collaboration um, because what that really does for us as the retail sector is it kind of puts a barrier between the central bankers and the control aspect around CBCs. There's somebody there. There's a middleman there to say, hey, I don't think that, you know, this is a good thing. I don't think that that is, um, you know, a good idea. Of course, do central bankers have the last word? It's questionable. Um, but as we do see CBDCs, we know that Hedera is also a major name to be mentioned around that. It's not just Ripple uh, with XRP, for an example, or Stellar with XLM. Um, Hedera is also working within the space through initiatives with MTech. We even see here from Blade Labs join our CEO at the CBDC Innovation Webinar alongside global thought leaders organized by MTech as discussions delve into CBDC's transformative potential and fintech's role. Blade Labs reinforces its mission to onboard the next billion and be part of the digital financial evolution. And uh, yeah, MTech is one to definitely keep a close eye out on. Um, even recently, talking more so about CBDCs, going back to July, we know that Hedera was collaborating with some very large names around this construction contract that was settled using a pilot CBDC. Not centralized and its partners in the, Re the Reserve Bank of Australia, sorry, CBDC pilot program in collaboration with the DFCRC are pleased to have concluded a specific use case for the construction sector, working with the teams at Digital Mutual, Trade Collective, OC Interiors, Hedera, and ZeroCap with assistance from Herbert uh, Smith, Free Hills, not centralized, demonstrated its trade flow system for easing liquidity risk in supply chains. And um, this is something to really kind of look into because Australia is also a big area of focus around this new digital wave of finance. We know that Hedera has been shaking things up in Australia for a very long time. Um, and we even see a few quotes here talking a little bit more about this. Um, this one down here is what I really kind of want to look at. And it says, it is exciting to see implementation of digital asset solutions to real world pain points through the RBA CBDC pilot. In this use case, tokenization and automation promote higher levels of trust within the supply chain. These same concepts have broad application across different industry sectors and their associated legal frameworks. And then, of course, we have Rob Allen from Hedera. This inspiring CBDC collateralized stablecoin project demonstrated well how a public DLT or DLN, uh, such as Hedera, can be utilized for delivering solutions to real world problems. The speed of delivery and quality of the solution is testament to the pro professionalism of the not centralized team that we're building on Hedera. And uh, yeah, you know, I do think that there's a lot of connections back to Hedera around this digital financial transformation. Even recently with Drop and the FedNow uh, service, 
we know that this was a, a big thing. And just recently on August 21st, um, they joined Coindesk TV to talk a little bit more about Drops Vision. Uh, we had the chance to provide a better understanding of what it truly means to be listed on the FedNow Showcase. And uh, listen closely to this video. It's about two and a half minutes long. Run the clip. Bitcoin's recent bloodbath, Dara's HBAR token, has risen nearly 16% in the last two weeks as the Federal Reserve's instant payments platform, FedNow, listed Drop as a Hedera based micropayments platform as a service provider. Joining us now to discuss is Drop CEO, Sushil Prabhu. Welcome to the show, Sushil. Hey, good morning. Yes, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Of course, thanks for being here. Now, Drop allows micropayments in Hedera's H bar, the US dollar, and Circle's USDC. Just briefly give us an overview um, of Drop and how it works. Sure, absolutely. So, Drop is a micropayment platform, it's an extremely cost effective platform built to support both fiat, which is US dollar uh, in our case and um, digital currencies like USDC stable coins, right? It is, consumers are looking for more choices uh, in terms of payments and merchants are looking for a very extremely cost-effective platform. So we built Drop based on three key drivers that we see in the market. One of them is 50% of the consumer reported payments are under $25 and there is no cost-effective payment platform out there to uh, enable payments, small payments. The second big trend that we see in the market is a global emergence on instant payment rails, which is where the Fed now comes in. So there is a global emergence of instant payment rails, both in terms of the banking rails and in terms of the digital currencies, right? Uh, but these are just rails. There is no payment capability on top of those rails, right? And that's what Drop provides. And the third key aspect, uh, which is again why FedNow is quite relevant to us, is there's been a, lots of studies out there that for mass adoption, uh, consumers prefer digital wallets provided by their bank, as long as it has all the other features that they're looking for, is rewards and uh, buy now, pay later, all of those services. So we build drops specifically for this market, which is small value transactions, instant payments, and then you can pay via bank. So that, that's what drop in a nutshell is. It's built on Hadera Hashgraph. That's why Hadera is very relevant to us. Uh, we use Hadera Hashgraph's uh, ledger for managing the ledger itself. So there you guys have it. And uh, we do see even down here the, the direct quote there, by harnessing the key attributes of banking, rails, and DLTs from Hadera, we empower consumers with seamless payments using both fiat and digital currencies while delivering merchants a remarkably cost-effective credit card alternative. And, you know, listen, like as we look at Web3, we know slowly but surely it's becoming integrated within the global financial system. The real world around us is being digitized at a much faster pace than most people are, are aware. And even recently, right, like with Drop, um, going back to January of 2023, like this is before Drop was, you know, big within the ecosystem. Um, they talked about micropayments for Internet of Thing devices equal part of a smart grid economy. Imagine paying to charge and getting paid for data. Drop prioritizes device authentication, sub-second transactions, location data, and is eco-friendly on Hedera. And here you guys have all the ways that this could ultimately disrupt society. Connected devices need a micropayment process for a trillion sensors. Guys, as we look at Drop, okay, like this is much bigger than what anyone can really kind of look at, right? Like on, on paper, Drop seems like a, a use case that's not that big. Like a lot of people overlooked Drop until Fed now. Um, but we were talking about Drop back in the beginning of 2023 and even in the middle to the end of 2022 when Drop was fully announced. Um, we talked about it then. We were like, this is much larger than what most people are looking at it. Um, because listen, like this could disrupt everything. As we look at the world around us, it's changing rapidly. Every single day, technology is advancing. Um, and as we look at that, right, like this is talking about the city smart grid, buy auto for sharing data, connected cars, buy power from auto, smart power grid, pay to charge, 
EV charging, pay tolls, connected tolls, pay to park, digital parking, pay for delivery, smart homes, location-based offers, physical stores, like all of this is looking at device authentication, fractional payments, location-based services, sub-second response, all of this powered by Drop. Like this is big. And also re remember, like they already have integrations with some of the largest e-commerce giants like Shopify. Drop is officially a payment app for Shopify merchants to use. Accept micropayments, build referral incentives, grow customers, and keep more of every dollar earned. Get started for free in just three steps. I keep telling you guys, like these use cases that are building on Hedera that seem small are some of the largest giants around some of the biggest markets out there. And I do think that Hedera is planting um, seeds everywhere. And we're going to start to see major growth and expansion um, at a very rapid pace. And I'm very excited for this. I think things are really kind of brewing around the world of digital finance, digital banking. Um, and I think that's all centered out on DLT, Web3, you name it. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. With that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.